Hi guys, welcome back to my movie channel. Today let's watch an action movie, Shot Collar, released in 2017. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Never mess with some people in prison, because some people can get you beaten to death. This man, for example, messed with this black man. The black man hit him as a result. However, he also refused to give up, quickly punching the black man in the face and knocking him to the ground. The black man was violently attacked and did not dare to fight back. The warden had to take out pepper spray to stop the man. The black man was also lucky to keep his small life. The other criminals in the prison found him extremely cruel. They took him seriously. This is also his second day in prison, but he has the guts to fight the black man. He is indeed a brave and daring man, but what many people don't know is that his heart is filled with a feeling of helplessness. He is Jacob Harlan. Was a financial broker before going to prison. His life was once extremely happy, but in a drunken driving accident, he accidentally stabbed a friend to death. Jacob was sued by the victim's family and could face up to seven years in prison. Jacob's wife, Kate, wanted to tell the house to sponsor him because he wanted to help his wife and son keep the property. He gave up the appeal. The court found that he had a sincere attitude to admit guilt, so they sentenced him to 16 months in prison. His lawyer friend had told Jacob that in prison he had to be bolder and more ruthless than the others. On the first night in prison, he witnesses a boy being bullied by other criminals. The bully guy is extremely painful. So he decides to attack an African-American prisoner when provoked to intimidate other prisoners. The prisoner's big brother, Bottles, is amazed at Jacob's fighting ability and considers Jacob a talent. He sends Jacob to fight with stronger prisoners to help Jacob raise his rank in prison, also testing whether Jacob can afford to join his white supremacist gang, Peni, or not. Soon after, Jacob receives his first mission. He has to smuggle heroin to the exercise yard. At midnight, when the warden has finished his shift, he loads a balloon containing heroin and inserts it into his anus. The next day, he goes to the training ground, then goes to the bathroom, squats on the toilet, and takes out the heroin he has hidden. The first mission is completed perfectly. Jacob is promoted to the bottle's trusted underling and gains the protection of the Peni gang in this prison. When he thinks he is safe, he immediately receives a second mission. He must team up with his teammates to kill the top elite criminal. Jacob is extremely scared because if he is found to be a murderer, he will have to receive a heavier sentence. However, if he does not accept the quest, he will lose the protection of Peni. To survive in prison, he could only grit his teeth and accept the mission. When the cell door is open, his opponent also appears. Jacob calmly locks his opponent's throat, takes out the knife, and brutally kills the opponent. He takes off his prison shirt and walks out of the victim's cell. After completing the second mission, Jacob gains more and more experience. He rises eight levels continuously in the gang Peni. The criminals in the prison greatly admire him. After achieving the position he wants, Jacob wants to spend the rest of his time in prison living in peace. He wants to get out of prison quickly and see his family. Unexpectedly, Jacob's third mission appears. He needs to cooperate with the Mexican prisoners to create a riot, attack the gang of black prisoners. Since this is a major riot, they need to work closely with their comrades. Before the riot, prison buddy Shotgun reminds him that during the riot, he must try to avoid the security cameras. Jacob is skilled in team combat. He decides to apply what he has learned in prison and calmly walks to the exercise yard. He sees his teammates take out their weapons. Their weapons are extremely diverse, sharpened brushes, daggers hidden under the table or on the ground. The scariest thing is, Bottles equips him with a small, exquisite dagger. His fighting power skyrockets. Since Jacob is a high ranker in the Peni, he, he is armed with a plastic knife. When he sees that his comrades are fully armed, Bottles shouts to announce the official riot. Bottles and his subordinates target the leader of the Black Gang. The attack is terrible. They frantically rush at each other with sharp weapons, then they use their weapons to stab enemies, necks, and weak points. Bottles is extremely cruel. No prisoner dares to come near to attack him. The other Bottles subordinates find their big brother extremely fierce. Their fighting prowess explodes. The police want to stop the riot, so they fire at the exercise yard. However, their firepower cannot stop these frenzied prisoners. Jacob is attacked by an enemy while protecting a comrade. He is stabbed in the shoulder. Jacob turns around, holding a plastic knife in his hand, and frantically stabs his opponent in the body. Unexpectedly, his plastic knife is not enough to cause damage to the opponent. It breaks in half. When Jacob loses his weapon, his enemy is also killed. He takes the victim's screwdriver and continues to fight. After carefully observing the combat situation of each comrade, he finds the one who attacked his comrades before. He's like a mad bull, immediately rushes to the opponent. Using a screwdriver to stab the enemy to death, when Jacob is going crazy because of the riot, the prison guard shoots and kills a criminal. The riot stops when all of his murder is caught on security cameras. With this evidence, the court sentenced him to another seven years in prison. Kate completely breaks down. She cries bitterly. Jacob doesn't want Kate to keep waiting for him, so he forces his wife to remarry. He is immediately taken to the felony's prison, Corcoran State Prison. The people in prison here are all controlled by a big brother, the Beast. The prisoners in this prison are extremely dangerous. The prison also gives prisoners only one hour of free time a day. When having yard time, the prisoners here are all locked in an iron cage. On his first day, Jacob faces the Beast. The Beast is extremely cruel. He has superhuman fighting strength and is merciless. With one hand, he can cover the sky in this prison. 
Once he is angry, the warden must also fear him. In addition, the beast is also free to use the phone and communicate with his accomplices outside the prison. After all, Jacob is just an ordinary man. He has no right to challenge the beast. The beast sees Jacob as a man just like him. He helps Jacob train to improve his health and combat experience. Jacob is working hard every day. Today, his chance finally comes. He receives a letter from Kate. Jacob gets angry. He signs the divorce agreement. The divorce is not the reason why he's angry, but Kate will marry his neighbor, Joshua. Jacob is extremely angry. As soon as the warden puts him in the cage during yard time, he rushes into a criminal and causes serious damage to the opponent. Jacob uses his arm to lock the opponent's head and wants to break his neck. The warden uses pepper spray but is unable to stop Jacob. Jacob is locked in a small dark room for a month, but his superior fighting prowess is recognized by the beast. Jacob's fame grows rapidly and becomes the second big boss in the prison. When he is taken out of the dark room to the exercise yard, he finds that there are no criminals except for the beast. At this time, he discovers that the criminals want to avenge Jacob, so that night they killed four prison guards. After this riot, they were also held in another, harsher prison. In the end, only Jacob and the Beast remain in the state prison. He and the Beast live peacefully in prison for six years. Jacob is pardoned a year earlier, and when he thinks he can meet his family, the Beast gives him a new mission. The Beast demands that when Jacob is released, he must help the Beast trade a batch of weapons. If Jacob doesn't agree, the Beast will send someone to kill his family. He has no choice but to accept this mission and cut off all his relationship with his son through the letter. Jacob understands that once he starts the arms trade, he has no choice of turning back. Jacob is determined to leave his family to avoid getting involved with them. On the first day of the pardon, Jacob is greeted by Shotgun and the gang members. Shotgun introduces him to Howie, a young Afghanistan war veteran with no criminal record. Howie used to know several gangsters and successfully sold weapons to Mexicans. In this mission, the money they earned will be divided in half. Led by the Shotgun, he arrives at a secret gang base. Here he finds countless prostitutes and other gangsters. A girl wants to have sex with him, but Jacob doesn't care. After all, he is one of the most feared men in the gang. He is completely uninterested in this type of woman. As he is about to discuss the specific rules of dealing with the arms trade with a shotgun, a group of mysterious men armed with submachine guns attack the small room. Jacob falls to the floor to dodge the bullets. The shotgun and the other subordinates protect Jacob from leaving the room and put him in shotgun's car to escape. Jacob is very angry. He is sure that someone has leaked their information. He orders that anyone who reveals his information will be beheaded. Jacob lets Shotgun get off the car. He orders Shotgun to go to the hotel to find him and asks him not to tell anyone about the hotel address. He has just arrived at the hotel when he is called to the police station by police officer Kutcher. Kutcher asks him about the shooting. Jacob pretends to be stupid and shows that Kutcher is mistaken. The next day, Jacob goes to find Kate and gives her a check for $170,000 so she can use the money to pay for his son's school fees. Kate complains to him that in seven years, he hasn't written a single letter to his family. He tells Kate that they are no longer have a relationship. Kate wants him to meet their son, so she brings him into Jacob's hotel room. Because he doesn't want to involve his family, Jacob closes the door immediately. He looks outside through the window and discovers that a policeman is staring at him. Jacob immediately tears the bed sheet to form a rope, then kicks the toilet window to escape. After escaping police surveillance, he is reunited with Shotgun and the others. He tells Shotgun that Mexican client, Surinose, will trade with them within the next hour and provide a trading venue for Howie and the others to prepare. When Jacob's words end, Shotgun smiles mockingly that Surinose is too cautious. From his experience, Jacob quickly senses something wrong. After finishing his meeting with Shotgun, he drives to track Shotgun. He finds out that Shotgun is Kutcher's informant. It turned out that the Shotgun's relative was arrested by Kutcher because he wanted to save his relative. So Shotgun had to sell the information to the police. However, Shotgun doesn't know that Kutcher is just using him because when Shotgun thought that he had successfully saved his relative, she had to go to jail. Jacob thinks that Shotgun is a traitor, so he breaks down Shotgun's door and attacks him. He takes out his dagger, then frantically stabs the shotgun in the waist and kills him on the spot. Jacob takes out a plastic bag to destroy evidence and uses Shotgun's phone to send him a message. An hour later, Kutcher arrives at Shotgun's house and discovers Shotgun has been murdered. He finds Shotgun's phone and the text message Jacob sent earlier gradually falling into Jacob's trap. At the same time, Jacob and Howie meet and go to the warehouse together. They load thousands of AKs and pistols into the truck. Howie personally drives to the trading site with Jacob. Jacob also lets some of his subordinates drive behind them to provide cover. At this point, Jacob takes out a gun and points it at Howie's head. He asks Howie to reveal the actual number of guns. Howie just has to tell the truth. It turns out that he has 2,000 guns in his hand and wants to sell them himself to make money. However, Howie can only sell 1,000 guns. The rest are sold privately and he owns five personal accounts. Jacob tells Howie that Shotgun has been killed and he wants Howie to give up the weapons business, get rid of the gang, and have a normal life because he knows Howie has no criminal record, so he doesn't want to drag Howie to hell. He orders Howie to get out of the car, then takes out his phone and sends the trading address to Shotgun's phone. Kutcher, after receiving the weapons trading address, immediately goes to the location and quickly to ambush. Meanwhile, Jacob is driving a truck to meet Surinos. Mexican customer Surinos throws a large bag of money in front of Jacob. Kutcher sees the evidence immediately and, along with his subordinate, attack the group and surround them. 
Jacob is knocked to the ground. He raises his arms in surrender. In his cell, Kutcher wants Jacob to tell him the mastermind, the beast, and promises Jacob that once he gathers enough evidence, he will get Jacob out of prison. Jacob doesn't believe Kutcher's words. He understands that the beast is a man with many years of experience who will surely guess Kutcher's plan. Once again, Jacob is sent back to state prison and receives a life sentence. That night in his cell, he takes out a cylindrical tube inside the tube containing a small iron plate and a razor blade. He makes the small iron plate into a handcuff key and stuffed it inside his prison clothes. When the guard puts him in the cage, he is confronted with threats from the beast. The beast threatens him that he will kill Jacob's entire family members to punish him. He completely ignores these threats. The warden handcuffs Jacob and prepares to take him back to his cell. He quietly takes the key to open the handcuffs and uses the razor blade to threaten the warden. Jacob removes the warden's radio and locks him in the cage, then opens the beast's cage. He suddenly stabs into the beast's aorta. The beast dies on the spot, which means he has become the biggest boss in this prison. He goes to the warden and says that he has become the boss, hoping the warden can help him handle the whole case related to the beast's death. The warden wants to protect his life and wants money from Jacob, so he becomes Jacob's dog. But all these actions of Jacob are only to protect the small family. Jacob will still live in prison, but no one dares to anger him. Everyone looks at him with admiration. Alright, my video ends here. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. Don't forget to turn your notifications. That way really supports my channel. Goodbye.